hey guys welcome to the channel and thank you for watching mike manyan the french goalkeeper to chelsea football club is getting serious and according to report in italy chelsea already made some contact even in france you know l'équipe which is one of uh, the most trusted outlets over there in france they reported that official contact been made and Chelsea are ready to offer 40 million plus Edouard Mendy or you know Christian Pulisic or Hakim Ziyech or you know Ruben Loftus-Cheek we have to cook some kind of deal between us and AC Milan well all that is still paper talk because Romano hasn't like confirmed it or Sky Sport, but there is no smoke without fire. I think Chelsea are looking for a goalkeeper and I would take Manion anytime over Mendy, over Kepa, over Onana, over anybody. He is a proper, proper goalkeeper. Good size. Everybody knows that size is a problem for me you know i respect short goalkeepers like kepa or onana and all that but you know it's just kind of a mindset i like my goalkeeper to be imposing you know physically imposing and mignon is physically imposing he can play from the back the brother can pick a pass he is the whole package the only issue I have with this brother is he takes a lot of risks, he dribbles a lot, and that could cost him in the Premier League. Remember, Edouard Mendy tried to dribble past some people and we know how it ended up. Chelsea actually scouted this guy when he was at Lille before we went for Edouard Mendy. But I am not going to change anything. I am not going to regret buying Mendy because Mendy is a winner. He won us the Champions League, the World Cup, the Super Cup, and we have to respect him. And a goalkeeping scout, because we hear you had a big influence on bringing Edward, Edward Mendy to this club. Well, as a part of my job is obviously to know about players when I'm asked by the club or by the manager. So, obviously, uh, you know, I, I gave my input in terms of, uh, you know, to search of the search of the goalkeeper because we wanted to add to, you know, to our goalkeeping group uh, a slightly different uh, type of a goalkeeper. You know, we obviously we have Kepa and we have Eli Caballero who's been, you know, uh, every time we needed him, he was ready to step in. And uh, you know we uh, we decided with uh, with Kepa uh, going through a difficult moment where things were not perfectly happening for him on the pitch. We decided to add to our goalkeeping group, and and then obviously you know we we agreed to to bring uh, Eduard, and and so far as obviously he's been doing great. Yeah, it's just because Mendy can be the first Chelsea keeper to clock up five successive clean sheets in a decade. You probably remember the keeper who did that last time. That'll be you, of course. Yeah, I, I remember my start and, and obviously it's been it's been great start for me because if I remember in the in, in the first eight games we had seven clean sheets. But uh, but obviously if uh, if he gets and makes it better then I will I will be happy because of uh, because the team will do well and we will we will be winning and this is ultimately what we want. He's a big lad, I mean six foot six inches and he's twenty eight years old. How did he stay under the radar for so long? How come we picked him up now? I think you know. I have to give credit to Christophe Lolichon, who uh, who actually spoke to me about him three and a half years ago when uh, when when Eduard started playing for us because uh, you know he the one thing which is which is great about his story is obviously his his year where he he were because of the the fault of his agent he was without the club. So you know while I was playing at Arsenal he told me he said you know watch this goalkeeper is very interesting story so I started watching him and following him and obviously as you watch all the other goalkeepers as well and and when I took my job I watched about 30 40 different goalkeepers over the past year and a half but uh, but obviously I kept following Eduard and when you see his um, evolution and his uh, his progression every year obviously it, it got me the idea of uh, you know when we talked about what we want from the goalkeeper what we 
would like to add uh, to our goalkeeping group. You know, his, his name came to my mind and in the end of the day, uh, you know, the manager has a big input, the club uh, and the scouting, everybody has his input and, and we all agreed that uh, is the goalkeeper we should uh, we should get over. Well done, Patrick. Well done for getting a goalkeeper and well done for getting here as well, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, we, so far it's been great to have him, I have to say, and hopefully he will continue like that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Let's move on and talk about Kai Havert, the silky German. Apparently, Arsenal want him. Some trusted sources like Matt Lou talked about it. Uh, in private, it's not in public yet, but they are considering Kai Havert a lot. And you ask yourself, how all the so-called reject, all the so-called flops at Chelsea Football Club are wanted by other teams? Real Madrid wanted Kai Havert, but they are, they are stuck with the price tag. I know that they're going to come back for this. This is just my theory here. I think everybody knows that Chelsea need money. They need to sell until June the 30th. So we still have a few days to go until we sell some players and try to balance books for the financial fair play. Everybody knows about it. They're not going to they're not going to rush anything. They can wait until the last minute and Chelsea are going to be obligated to give in because otherwise they're going to get stuck with the players that don't want to be there and they are not going to perform and you're going to have to pay them 300k a week. So there is a decision to make even if we have to lose money, we have to do it because we are paying the price of our own stupidity you know the 300 million that we spent under thomas tuko last summer was the the biggest mistake that we made because those players didn't really produce on the pitch and they are you know some of them are very uh, old <laughs> you know like kulibali and and obamyang and nobody one of them nobody is going to spend that kind of money on them and now we have to sacrifice the players from our own academy or the players that still have some value and who can even contribute to the team now we have no choice but to sell them in order to balance books so nobody to blame but ourselves but listen we're gonna learn by making mistakes you know nothing is gonna be perfect I know we've been making mistakes, but I think we should be fine. You know, the future is bright at Chelsea Football Club. Let's go back to Kai Havert. Why Arsenal want him? And why are we selling our players to our direct uh, open, opponent or, you know, rivals? Back in the day, we used even to buy players for the sake of it, just to prevent our you know rivals you know not to get them but now it looks like okay mount you want to go to united okay let them pay the money and you go there <laughs> kai harvard you want to go to arsenal go <laughs> Jorginho, go but anyways people just telling you that those players are not bad players they are good players in a in a bad system in a bad team and you will see people like kovacic people like you know even Jorginho. he did pretty good at arsenal even though arsenal want to sell him as soon as possible you will see kai Havert if he goes to to arsenal the team is already working very good and he's gonna work good in that team you know Mason Mount, if he goes to Manchester United or Liverpool, we're not going to make theories anymore because he's going to perform in the system and the manager that will trust him. So I'm, I'm tired of fighting for them. They don't need me to fight for them. But what I don't understand is the way we sabotage players at Chelsea Football Club without using any context. Can we just ask ourselves a question like why always the players fault why not chelsea's fault 
manager's fault. Just ask yourself that question. 